editing images like this globally is a nightmare, since in this image we have areas with huge tonal differences. I want to show you my approach of how we can target certain areas of the image and treat them in a way so we can balance this image. As always, you can follow along this tutorial by downloading the raw file. You can find a link to download it in the description of this video. And now let's begin. So why is editing an image like this globally a problem? Let's go open up the basic panel and let's say we want to try to fix the shadows in the foreground. We want to make the whole area brighter. So I'm going to bring up the exposure and as we bring up the exposure, the darker areas in the foreground do look better, but we will quickly run into issues with the bright background being completely blown out because we are targeting every single area of the image the same way. We need to target certain areas in order to get a balanced looking exposure. Still, we need basic adjustments globally to set up the image for further editing. And that's the first step we want to do. I'm going to change the profile from Adobe Color to Adobe Standard, just to lessen the overall contrast a bit. This gives me more control. Then let's work on the white balance. It looks pretty good. However, I want to slightly brighten up the image by bringing up the temperature, just giving this a shot more of a golden hour look like this. And with that, I'm pretty happy. We can bring up the shadows very, very slightly just to start bringing back details from the darker areas. Since you are only using tiny amounts, doing this globally is totally fine. The same goes for the blacks. So let's bring them up and this will help us restore details from the darkest areas. Wonderful. Now I do want to bring down the highlights, which will help to make the sky just a little bit darker. And at the same time, if you take a look at the histogram, you can see it's quite nice balanced. However, there is some space left on the right side. And we can use that space by bringing up the whites, kind of filling it. And as we do this, we are bringing back contrast to the image. So I'm going to raise the whites quite a bit. Right around here looks really, really good. You can see how this one slider has added a lot of punch back to our image. Now, I also want to add some sharpness by increasing the texture. And let's bring up the dehaze for some extra contrast. Just a little bit. Be really, really careful with the dehaze slider because this looks weird very fast. Okay, and then let's bring up the vibrance. I'm also going to bring up the saturation because I really want this image to be vibrant. Okay, this is looking really, really good. We can compare it to before real quick. We have a lot more details in the shadows already. The white balance looks a little bit warmer and overall we added a little bit of sharpness as well. Now we want to target a few areas more precisely and give them a little more intense treatment in order to fix the exposure. And as always, we are going to do that with masking. So the main areas for this image is obviously the sky the mountain range in the back, then maybe the reflection in the foreground and the very near foreground with all those green color tones. Let's start with the sky. I'm going to create a simple sky selection mask here and I want to further modify it by subtracting a linear gradient. I'm going to take away a part from the top like this. What I want to do with this mask is to make just the horizon level of the sky warmer and brighter. So with this mask, I'm going to bring up the whites just around here. And I'm going to bring up the temperature to introduce more golden light. And uh, let's bring up the saturation so we can see the colors in here. Perfect. Maybe let's make this linear gradient a little smaller, but that looks great. I'm going to use another sky selection. And again, I want to modify it, subtracting another linear gradient. This time, however, I'm going to bring it up from the bottom part. And this time I want to make the top darker. So what I'm doing here is to bring down the exposure. I'm going to use very tiny adjustments because I will be stacking multiple of these linear gradients on top of each other to get a more natural effect. So we don't want to overdo dropping the exposure with only one mask because that looks weird. I'm also going to bring up the temperature right in here because I think the blue tones in the very top area do look a bit strange. I want to counter that by bringing up the white balance temperature. 
Okay, now I want to continue using a linear gradient for the very top. And you can see I'm targeting smaller and smaller areas of the sky while I stack these masks on top of each other. And I want to make sure only the sky is affected. So I'm going to click on those three dots and choose intersect mask with select sky. This way we make sure the mountain won't be changed, only the sky. Let's bring down the exposure very gently to add this very cool gradient effect. Okay, now we worked for a while on the sky, but what about the area in the foreground? How can we target that? I'm going to use a linear gradient and very, very roughly cover everything in the foreground. With that linear gradient, we are now also overlaying the mountain range in the back, and that's not what we want. We want to treat those areas separately. So we need to find a way to get rid of that mountain range from this selection. What we can do is to say subtract, choose an object mask. Here, make sure the rectangle select mode is active. And now I'm going to draw a rough rectangle around the mountain range in the back. And hopefully Lightroom will get the mask right. This is looking pretty good. Still, there's a bit of sky selected, so we can further fix that by subtracting a select sky mask. And just like this, you can see how we can nicely target this very, very specific area in the foreground. And what I want to do in here is to make it brighter. So let's bring up the exposure, and this way we can get more details out of the shadows without affecting the mountain range in the back or the sky. Perfect. We can also bring up the shadows a little bit for more details. And I do want to bring up the clarity as well, just giving this area some more punch. Let me use a radial gradient and I'm going to draw it around the peak of the Matterhorn right here. Now I only want to affect the mountain, so we need to further adjust this mask. Let's say subtract and choose select sky. Perfect. I want to make this mountain peak stand out a little more, especially that glow on the top of it. I'm going to increase the temperature a little more, making this glow more intense. And I'm going to bring down the highlights just a little bit because I think we might lose some details in here otherwise. And I'm also going to bring up the clarity to make it pop. Perfect. Then I want to dodge these flowers down here in the foreground just to add another interesting element to the image. I'm going to create a color range mask for that and I'm going to click right in here in the white part of that flower. You see we have a little more selected than needed. We can make use of the color range refine slider bringing it down and thus we're narrowing down the selection. Of course this doesn't get rid of everything that's selected. So I'm going to click on those three dots again, choose intersect mask with, and here I'm choosing the brush. With the brush, I'm going to brush over all the areas which I want to dodge. So just these white flowers. That's a perfect selection. And what we want to do to dodge these areas is to increase the exposure quite a bit. And I'm also going to bring up the whites all the way, just like that. Now watch what happens if I deactivate this mask from before to after. This looks much, much better. I think we could even duplicate this mask. So let's right click on it and choose duplicate mask. I really like how this looks. I still want to modify it slightly. I'm going to say subtract and choose brush because I don't want the flowers near the edge of the image to be that bright. But I like how these in the center are brighter than the rest. So that's perfect. At this point, I want to work on the sky a little more. So let me create another sky selection. I want to make the horizon even warmer. So I'm going to say subtract and choose linear gradient, take away the top. And I only want to target a very narrow area above the mountain range, just like this. What I'm doing to make this area warmer is obviously we can bring up the temperature some more. We could also play around with the tint, which will give us a slightly different color tone. The fact that this area is super bright is kind of a problem for saturation. So if I bring down the whites, you will see we will get some more intense yellow tones in here. 
So that's the reason for me to slightly bring down the brightness again, just around here. So in order to get more color out of this area. So we did work on the foreground, we did work on the sky. What's missing now is the mountain range in the distance. How can we select that? That's rather simple for this case. What I'm going to do is to create a new object selection mask right here. And again, I'm making sure the rectangle select mode is active. And once more, just draw a rough rectangle around the mountain range in the back. Lightroom creates this very sharp mask between foreground and the mountain range. However, we do run into issues with the top. That's not that big of a problem. First, let me add another mask. I'm going to use the brush and I'm just brushing roughly over the peak like this. Then I'm going to say subtract and let's choose select sky. And there we have a perfect selection just for the mountain range in the distance. Now we can nicely target this area to make it pop a little more. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is to bring up the contrast. As you can see, as I raise the contrast, the colors will do look a little different. So I want to counter that by bringing up the temperature a notch just to fix the blue color cast in the back. And I'm also going to bring down the saturation a little bit. I want to further bring up the contrast by bringing down the shadows. And I also want to bring down the blacks a little. This really, really helps, giving this part of the image more punch. We can also play around with some clarity. This looks really, really good. All right. I'm still not quite happy with the foreground. Let me target it using a radial gradient. And what I want to do in here is to slightly bring up the exposure. Really don't want to overdo it, but I think something like this looks great. And then let me once more work on the sky. I'm going to use a sky selection again. And let's subtract a linear gradient coming up like this. And the reason here is because I want to make the top part a little darker. So I'm going to bring down the exposure once more. All right, I really like how the sky is looking now. Of course, we have worked quite heavily on the sky. The problem is the reflection does look a little brighter than the top, which is unnatural. And I get a lot of comments about that in my images. So I want to fix that for this shot. This is a little trickier than the rest. So uh, let's start creating a new color range mask and let's target this bright color right in here. You see, we are selecting way more than needed. Again, I'm making use of the refine slider. So let's bring it down. Think I might subtract the luminance range mask, targeting the very darkest parts of the image like this. So I'm, I just click right here in the shadows and we end up with a pretty good selection, I would say. Still, I want to subtract linear gradient. And of course, we want to get rid of that top part here since we only want to target the water. And I'm going to subtract with the brush and let me just get rid of everything. Very, very roughly here. We really don't need to change that rock. Uh, let me also subtract a linear gradient coming up from the bottom part. Just like this. Now, what do we want to do in here? To make the reflection darker, I'm simply going to bring down the exposure and this should fix it. Then one more thing I want to do. Let's add one more linear gradient covering the very near foreground. And I'm going to say subtract color range mask with the color range mask, I'm going to click right here in the blue part of the water. So we are pretty much selecting all the green areas of the foreground. And I want to bring down the brightness a little more in this particular spot. So let's bring down the exposure. Uh, let's also bring down the temperature and let's bring up contrast and let's add a bit of clarity. All right, I think this looks much better. Maybe let's bring up the exposure a notch. But at this point, we are done with the masking adjustments. So let's take a look at before. This was our image after the basic adjustments. And here we have the image with the masking stuff applied. So the image is much more balanced. The different areas are much closer together exposure wise. We don't have any outliers with areas being too dark or too bright. Now with the masking out of the way, we can do a little color grading. So let's go ahead, open up the color mixer 
I want to start in the hue tab. I do want to bring down the orange hue very, very slightly. I'm doing this mainly for the sky, giving it more of an orange color tone. For the same reason, I'm going to bring down the yellow hue, just like this. This is just a personal thing. I just love these orange tones in the sky like that. Then let's switch over to the saturation panel. I want to bring up orange as well as the yellow. And I want to bring down the green tones because those are quite overwhelming in the foreground. And I think that's good for now. We can also head into the luminance tab. I want to bring up the orange luminance just a little bit, which will make the mountain peak a bit brighter. And we could drop the blue luminance just to add a little more contrast like that. Wonderful. Of course, we can also use the color grading tab for some split toning. Uh, let's use the highlights and make them quite a bit warmer. I'm going to set up the hue somewhere in the orange range, maybe even in the red range like this. And I really want to bring up the saturation here. All right, this looks great. Let's go into the mid-tones. I want to keep a nice color contrast between the warm and colder tones. So I'm going to use the mid-tones and I'm going to apply a very cold hue here. Something like this and let's bring up the saturation. Let's also use the shadows for some more color contrast. Again, I'm using a cold hue and let's bring up the saturation just a tiny bit. Perfect. Then let's go down into the calibration tab. Here, I just want to bring up the saturation for all these three colors. And we could actually play around with the blue primary hue. I'm going to drop it very slightly. I just think my images look better when I do this. Again, that's something personal. If you don't like doing it, you don't have to, obviously. Then it's time to sharpen the image in the details tab. And as always, I'm using the same settings. I'm bringing down the radius. I'm bringing up the details. Let's add some masking while holding down the Alt key and bring up the amount of sharpening. Done. And here we have the finished image. Actually, we could clean up the water a little bit in Photoshop. Let me also show this in this video. So we want to right click on the image, go to edit in and choose Photoshop. Now this will take ages. Anyway, let me duplicate this layer by hitting Ctrl J. And I'm going to start with that toilet in the back. I'm just using the spot healing brush, painting roughly over the toilet, and we can get rid of this quite nicely. Then that's not actually a real bird. Someone placed a plastic bird on this little rock. I don't know why. It's super annoying. So let's get rid of it again, just using the spot healing brush. Looks pretty good to me. All right. And of course we have some sensor spots. All right, so now what we can do, we can clean up the water, but I'm really not sure if I'm going to clean up everything or just a little bit. Let's do this. I'm going to zoom in and again, I'm using the spot healing brush. And first off, we want to clean the smallest things. So don't try to clean everything at once. Just go for the smallest patches of dirt on the water first, and you will have an easier time when later on trying to get rid of the bigger pieces. All right, I think I'm going to stop at this point because I don't want to make it look too clean. I'm quite happy with how the difference is now. But of course, you could clean up everything using just the spot healing brush if you want. So let me know what you think about this edit. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments as well. And thank you very much for watching this video.